What is the dark secret in your life? Part 1. Number 1. For the past several years, I had been living in fear of my husband. It wasn't always that way. My husband Todd and I started dating in my senior year of college. Everyone would say that we fell deeply in love with each other. But that would be an understatement. We had an instant connection. I felt as if this life for me started only when we first came together. And yet it was as if I always knew him, that he had been there all along. There was a sense that I had walked countless past lifetimes with him and that he would walk with me for the eternal future. Todd and I understood each other and we could tell each other anything. Together, everything was beautiful. Together, we seemed invincible. A few years after I graduated from college, Todd and I were doing a startup together. Things were rough and we were both under a lot of stress. During this time, I noticed that Todd would go through phases where he slept very little. He would run for days on two to three hours of sleep a night. During these phases, Todd was energetic, extremely productive and creative. These phases would be interwoven with periods where Todd would sleep a lot. During these tired periods, Todd slept until noon or 1 p.m. in the afternoon. He still got a lot of work done, but it seemed to take a great effort to drag himself up. Over a span of months, Todd became very erratic and strange during the little sleep phases, and gloomy and depressed during the tired phases. I didn't know much at the time, and I chalked it up to stress. One day, during an especially stressful time, Todd ran off and disappeared for hours. That evening, I got a phone call. The police had picked him up. His behavior was so erratic that they had taken him to a mental hospital. Todd was diagnosed with bipolar and court committed to the hospital for a week. After he found the right meds, Todd stayed high functioning for a long time. But even on meds, he had hypomanic episodes once or twice a year. With each episode, Todd's spirits would deteriorate. The manic episodes were unpredictable. Manic Todd was sometimes happy, creative Todd. Other times, Manic Todd was an agitated, bossy, angry Todd. Between episodes, Todd had a lot of psychological and emotional issues. He was bullied as a child and had a strict upbringing. He was the Troy I had written about in a couple of my previous answers. Watching Todd come down after Manic episodes was heartbreaking. He was devastated about the things he did and said. He would crash and spiral into darkness. He would retreat into himself, his spirit buried beneath layers of despair. Every few years, Todd would become psychotic during an especially bad manic episode and he had to be hospitalized. Every time except one, he was court committed. Through it all, I loved my husband. I loved him through his outbursts, PTSD, and OCD from his past emotional damage. I loved him through his deep depressive stages when I tried to reach for him through the dark abyss. I loved him through his rambling mania and wild psychotic episodes. I forgave him for breaking things, for screaming at me, for laying hands on me. I loved him because beneath it all, I could still see my Todd. Between the mania, depression, and psychosis, I would see my Todd, the Todd I fell in love with peeping out. My Todd, when he came through, was still loving, funny, and sweet. But slowly, the illness took my Todd away. It stole him, chiseled away at him, and ate at him until one day, I found that I was living in constant fear with a person I barely recognized. It hurt. The fear paled in comparison to losing the love of my life. It was torture for me to watch him slip away, to see him struggle and tormented in emotional pain. My life had become a waiting game. I waited and waited for him. I waited in constant flight or fight just to catch a glimpse of the real Todd, my Todd. My Todd was coming out less and less. But it didn't matter. I held my breath and waited just to spend time with him for a few weeks, a few days, a couple of days, a day at a time. Ten days ago, I woke up to find Todd missing. He often liked to go for a walk outside when he wasn't feeling well. The sun, grass, trees always made him feel better. But that day, he was gone an especially long time. Ten days ago, I dialed 911 and described a scene that I thought only happened in movies or to other people. Ten days ago, I hyperventilated as the 911 operator had me repeat myself over and over because she couldn't understand what I was saying. Ten days ago, my heart was broken and I cried like I never cried before. Ten days ago, police were swarming my property as they took statements and opened an investigation. Ten days ago, I had to break the news to my mother-in-law that she had lost her son. Ten days ago, my world was shattered. That was the day my poor, sweet Todd lost his battle with his inner demons and took his own life. Number 2. 
I have to anonymous for this. Because I might be the worst person ever. It's okay if you hate me. So here it goes. It was few months left for my school life, 10th grade, to end so I was 16. And the guy which me and my family knew was hitting on me. He was 26 year old and a married man. He told me he loves me and that I'm good person. Used to tell me about his wife that how she's mean and lies and blah blah. He tried a lot but I ignored it for a while. Later I thought maybe he's genuine. Maybe he really loves me. I fell for him. To be precise, I fell for his games. I told him yes and we started dating right after my school life ended. That was my first time ever with someone. As it was my first time, I didn't want it to get physical soon. I told him that. But he somehow managed to convince me and I would trust him blindly. Within a few days we kissed and almost made out. It was so good to be true. I felt as if this is fairy tale becoming true but little did I know. My college, 11th grade, after months of dating him. He cared so much. And possessive at times which I used to like. He made sure I am fine and blah blah blah. We used to talk all the time. Just like every teenager couple. But he didn't let me speak to my guy friends or hang out with them. I listened to him because he had some great emotional way of making me do stuff I don't wanna do. I got so involved with him, I didn't have any friends in college. It was just him. After a year, I was realized I'm getting mentally tortured. That he is dominating and controlling my life. So I tried to break off a lot of times. But he used his emotional talks to make me realize that I need him. That time I also realized that this is wrong. I'm not doing the right thing. Did I mention he has a son? It was a nightmare when I actually realized what is happening. I noticed his patterns and everything which was frustrating but he didn't leave me alone. He made me against my parents and family by talking all kind of stuff about them. And trusted him like an idiot. I even lost my virginity to him. Things that I didn't wanted to do, I did it. We made videos and took pictures which I wasn't comfortable with but he said it's love and that he wanted it. If I loved him, I should do it. And so I did. Video wasn't an issue until something happened. Back then I was the dumbest person ever. I used to believe in fantasy world where love exits like it did in Bollywood movies. So back to leaving him. Finally I broke it off after a year by blocking him everywhere. So basically I was with him for whole fucking two years where I did nothing other than crying and doing anything he wanted me to. He used to call me from 100 of numbers and I had to block every one of them. I couldn't tell my parents about it and I still haven't because I'm so ashamed of myself even after all this years. Fast forward 4 to 5 months after blocking him. Somehow we talked. By that time he had second son. I used abusive language too much because I wanted him to leave me alone. He was still like I love you and shit. And guess what? He has cancer and he want to spend his remaining life with me. I fell for that like too. So I used to talk to him because I trusted him and his love but I had no feelings for him. So after few months during my first year of graduation, I came to know something about him. I had never doubted him before. But when I did, I understood his games. He wanted people to stay away from me so that I will be with him only. During the time I wanted to break up with him, he made a fake Facebook profile and started adding people from my school and college. He started spreading rumors about me being him, the fake profile. Later he would tell me that what peoples are talking about me and that my friends did it. He used everything in his power to make me alone so I'll be with him. We even made plans to run away from everyone and get married. I'm glad I didn't do it. He even showed me his fake cancer report to prove that he wasn't lying. He's a psychopath. Finally I almost got rid of him but then I came to know about the photos and videos. That creep didn't delete it. And you know what's worse? He used to watch those videos and photos all this time. I told me a lot of times to delete but he didn't listen and continued watching it. And once or twice he even said that he'll upload those things if I leave him. He didn't do it but I was scared. So I was with him for some time. But I couldn't leave him even when I wanted to because I was scared about those photos and videos. 
So we were together and he always tried to kiss or get physical and I would say no. Finally I said I'm done. I can't tolerate that mental torture. I was mentally and emotionally destroyed by him. Everything is over. But he still calls me once in 4 to 5 months to torture me. He didn't even accept he lied. I've ever tried killing myself a lot of times because of this regret of ruining another woman's life. I know I'm the worst. They shifted somewhere else so I don't know where they are or what they do. But I miss his son because we were close. He was like my brother. To this day I miss him. My worst fear is facing him someday if we run into each other. I don't recognize him because he will need all grown up but he might recognize me. Also running into his wife is my worst fear. She's nice person. She did came to know about me and his husband. But I guess she knew he's like that because she didn't talk badly with me. She was sweet to me even after she came to know about us. I feel so bad. But then I tell myself that I was kid who was dumb which is true. But still I know it's my fault too. Have lived with this regret for almost 4 years. And still I can't forget it. I am also scared of that man. He's a psychopath he might show up one day or especially on my wedding day and I don't know do something bad. I am over whatever happened but I'm scared of him showing up one day. Because it has been like 7 years since I last saw him. And I don't know if he has that video. My life turned out great after him. I'm glad I realized it soon. Or else I would have run away with me like an idiot. That's good part. Worst part is I've so many trust issues. Even if I fell in love and get married and all. I have to share this past with him. I am so scared of that time too. I have shared this part of my life with my four friends. It's because of them I'm here. They gave me strength to forget and move on. I learned to forgive and love myself again. I used to blame myself so much because I said yes. Now I've made peace with this and I'm still trying to trust again. But still, somewhere in the back of my mind, this thing hasn't left me. In my defense all I can say is I was dumb and innocent kid who dated a married man with two sons. I guess I've told everything. There might be some gaps because it was years ago and I've tried covering so many stuff of those years. And sorry for any grammatical mistakes. It was hard typing it anonymously. It took me an hour telling the story as short as possible. Okay. I'm ready for all the hate. I know I am the worst person ever. Number 3. I'm too scared to be myself, because I'm scared I'll be the bad guy, I'm scared I'll be a monster. I'm also deeply lonely, depressed, and stuck in limerence with a girl I haven't seen in years. When I was 5, I met a girl I cared about, she was pretty and kind and spend time with me. We would walk and talk and enjoy each other's company. However, I was young and naive, I came to idolize her, to see her as a perfect angel, and that was unfair to her, but I did. So, when I got to see her imperfections, it annoyed me, made me mad. What was worse was that I wanted to be a guy who could comfort her, who could help her, who could be her knight in shining armor, but that was a lie, since she was better than me at pretty much everything. It made me feel inadequate, it made me jealous and miserable sometimes, I felt so small next to her, so insignificant. My feelings got the better of me, and I hurt her, I would argue with her and fight with her. We grew apart, she spent time with other friends, and I had to accept that I probably didn't matter to her in the same way, that I was only a small part of her world. But I couldn't, I could only get more mad. And I did, I threw fits, became moody and uncontrollable, eventually, when I was 7, I switched schools because of my bad behavior. Years 8 and 9 of my life were spent feeling miserable mostly. I saw her a couple times, spent time with her again. Despite everything, I cherish that time I spent with her above all else. I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which fed into feeling of being less than others that became more prominent later. I also was terrible in the classroom and would often get mad when I couldn't do things, and I bullied others because I hated myself. Eventually, I learned what had caused all this. I felt ashamed. I also saw her a couple more times, but a couple of things had changed. One. I was now scared and nervous to talk to her and two. 
She no longer seemed happy to see me, which made me feel bad, because I thought it was my fault. I had dreams about her a lot, dreams where I would be happy with her and we would hold hands and laugh and play like no time had passed. I constantly wanted to see her again, and drew up plans for how I would make it happen. But eventually it would wear off, and I would go back to trying to move on, which I never could. When I was 10, I quit school, because it was stressful and I was having trouble doing any work. The thoughts constantly ran through my head, and the slightest bit of challenge would set them off. I have so many feelings, but I have trouble expressing them, for years and years, they built up inside me. I have trouble embracing who I am, because who I am doesn't get the girl, he isn't the good guy, he is a monster. I would see people happy and in love, I tried to imagine myself being the same way, but it just didn't fit. I couldn't socialize, I didn't have any passions or hobbies. I constantly see others getting over their pain and letting go of the past, why can't I? It makes me mad, because everyone goes through bad stuff, but it sticks with me, and so I see myself as less. As recently as this year, I have wanted deeply to talk to this girl again. I remember everything about her that I knew then, although I could share those things about her, I won't. I tried to say hi, to see if she wanted to talk, because I thought it would help. I got blocked, go figure, creepy weirdo sends message out of the blue, what else could the outcome possibly be? I know I shouldn't, but I still miss her deeply. Normal people are supposed to be able to get over others and move on with their lives, but I can't. I feel wrong for thinking about her, but the thoughts keep coming. Day after day, for hours on end. I know that I should move on, that she would never talk to me, that I could never find happiness with her, but I can't do it. It makes me sick. I still can't get out of my head. As for the monster part, I started to repress myself from a young age, because I saw that side of me as the side that hurt her, that bullied others, that was dangerous, a threat, a menace to society. I have repressed myself so much I barely feel any emotion. Thanks for listening to my madness, sharing my pain helps a bit, and I hope I can start feeling better soon. I need to try and live my life, but I still have a lot of trouble doing that, being mentally disabled and possibly insane. I should probably take therapy, but I'm unsure about everything, and very indecisive. Thanks for listening to the rantings of a brain dead idiot, I'm going to go do something that makes me happy. Maybe someday, I'll be able to write this better. Thanks for listening to the stories, and if you want more stories like these. Let me know in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for interesting content.